you might be wondering, what will the Earth look like after a decade, century, or millennium? This info video will guide you regarding the anthropogenic effects on land and biogeochemical cycle. This is Project Invasive. The biochemical cycle known as the phosphorus cycle illustrates how the phosphorus is transformed and transported around in soil water in both living and dead organic matter. In organic and organic manure fertilizer applications, as well as the breakdown and decomposition of organic plant and animal material, all contribute to the addition of phosphorus to the soil. The principal method for the phosphorus export from soil is plant absorption. Additionally, phosphorus can leave the soil by surface runoff, erosion, or subsurface loss due to leaching. On the surfaces and margins of carbonates, clay minerals, and hydrous oxides, phosphorus absorption and desorption processes take place. In the acidic soils and alkaline soils, sorption is typically caused by covalent interactions between phosphorus and iron and aluminum and calcium carbonate. The availability of phosphorus in the soil is significantly influenced by precipitation and dissolution reactions. When phosphorus minerals dissolve over time and replenish in phosphorus in the soil solution, this is known as the dissolution of phosphorus minerals. The availability of phosphorus is increased by this reaction. Contrarily, precipitation takes place when phosphorus minerals are created by withdrawing phosphorus from the soil solution. The availability of phosphorus is decreased by this reaction. The processes of precipitation and dissolution moves very slowly. Phosphorus can also dissolve and precipitate as a result of changes in redox potential brought by the seasonal or irregular soil water logging. Immobilization is the term for the microbial transformation of phosphorus from soluble inorganic forms to insoluble organic forms. The opposite is referred to as mineralization. The phosphatase enzyme catalyzes the mineralization of phosphorus. Unfortunately, due to human activity, this cycle is interrupted, disrupting the natural cycle of the land. Activities such as phosphorus mining from phosphate rock and rapidly depleting guana deposits are human activities that disrupt this natural cycle. Phosphorus in the soil is also directly removed in crops and animal products via crop or plant uptake, runoff and erosion, and leaching. As a result of this artificial process, phosphorus deficiency has become a widespread problem around the globe, most notably in Australia, South Africa, and parts of South America. To counteract the potentially deadly effects of phosphorus deficiency, mineral phosphate fertilizer is applied to the land together with nitrogen and potassium to aid in plant harvestation. However, only a small proportion of the said fertilizer becomes available for crop uptake or harvest in a year. Thus, this process must be continuously repeated to maintain crop fields. These anthropogenic effects can be further explained with the use of Lee Chatler's principle, which states that the disturbance when applied to a resting system may drive the system away from its equilibrium state, but will invoke an influence that will counteract the effect. The first example is when humans do mining. There is a huge possibility of having a deformed land since there will be a hole on the bottom. Mine exploration is also associated with negative impacts on environments including deforestation, erosion, contamination and alteration of soil profiles, and contamination of local streams and wetlands. Deforestation would cause a huge amount of rainwater that would eliminate phosphates, causing our land to be sterile. Also, phosphorus-containing fertilizers raise soil phosphorus levels that are particularly harmful when they enter nearby aquatic environments through runoff. In addition, phosphorus that is drained into the water systems is called anthropogenic eutrophication. The surplus of plant nutrients stimulates the excessive development of algae when phosphorus levels are too high. However, these algae either perish or produce toxic algal blooms that harm the ecosystem's plants and animals. Thus, anytime excessive levels of phosphorus are leached into the water, human activities contribute to the destruction of aquatic ecosystems. Invasive species are introduced species that are not native to the ecosystem or a particular area. They can harm the natural resources in an ecosystem. Examples of invasive species are kudzu, a crawling coiling group of vines native to East Asia and treated as a garden novelty. Kudzu was introduced to America in 1935 to fight against soil erosion but was later dubbed as a symbol for invasive plant species for its uncontrollable growth. But what do invasive species do with the sedimentary and phosphorus cycle? Although the changes in invasive species are not instantly visible once they start, the effects of invasive species on the ecosystem are only noticeable once a significant amount of time has passed. In the context of the phosphorus cycle, the invasive species we are concerned about would affect the ecosystem's soil structure. 
it also affects the phosphorus cycle by changing the amount of phosphorus and therefore changing the soil to benefit the invasive plant species further. Additionally, sedimentation has an effect that helps invasive species. As we all know, sedimentation occurs through erosion and weathering. Therefore, in the case of plants, if we give enough time, the sediments can essentially drown the native plant species and provide a place in which invasive species can move in. Invasive species can have a wide range of negative impacts on the environment. They can outcompete native species for sources such as food, water, and space, leading to the decline or extinction of native species. Invasive species can also alter the physical and chemical properties of habitats, making them un unsuitable for native species. They can also act as vectors for diseases and parasites, spreading them to the native species and causing the decline in population. Invasive species can also damage or destroy agricultural crops leading to economic losses for farmers and other agricultural industries. They can also damage the infrastructure such as buildings, roads, and bridges by growing on around them. Invasive species can also change the way nutrients are cycled in an ecosystem which can lead to changes in the productivity of the ecosystem and services. What is epigenetics? Your environment and behaviors such as what you eat and how active you are are just as crucial to your health as your genes. Epigenetics is the study of how environmental factors and behavior can alter how your gene function. While epigenetic alterations are reversible and do not alter your DNA sequence like genetic changes do, they can alter how your body interprets a DNA sequence. Gene expression describes how frequently or when the instructions included in your genes are used to make proteins. While genetic changes can alter which protein is made, epigenetic changes affect gene expression to turn genes on and off. Since your environment and behavior such as diet and exercise can result in epigenetic changes, it's easy to see the connection between your genes and your behaviors and environment. There are two main modifications in epigenetics, histone modification and DNA methylation. A biological process called DNA methylation involves the addition of methyl groups to the cytosine bases of a DNA molecule. Due to a dynamic process called genomic imprinting, the pattern of DNA methylation in the genome alters during the development. The methylation cytosine likewise holds the DNA transcription. At the same time, histone modification plays a fundamental role in most biological processes in manipulating and expressing DNA. Hearing all this information, we dare to ask, are humans also considered as invasive species? Think about it. With all that is happening in our world, what will be our future if we start taking action?